Let's talk storage. No, no, not that kind of storage. Let's talk about the Simple Storage Service, or S3, in AWS. From this page in the AWS console, we could go and create what's called a bucket. But before we run off and do that, let's back up just a minute and talk about what this is and why you'd want to use it. Let's say that you and a couple of your friends are working on a side project together called Tiny Flicks. This will be a platform where users can upload their short films, only films that are five minutes or less. So they'll be uploading video files, and they're also going to have basic profile functionality that lets them upload their profile pictures. You and your friends are already sold on using AWS, and you've set up an EC2 instance. If you want to learn more about EC2, check out this other video of mine linked above. At the moment, you only have a few users on your system, specifically your mother and a few friends, who are trying to be supportive of this new venture of yours. When they go to upload a video or photos, these are currently just stored on an EBS volume, elastic block store, that's attached to your instance. In layman's terms, think of those as your computer's hard drive, except it's in the cloud. But you have grand plans for this project, and you think it's eventually going to blow up into a global platform with hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of users. <laughs> but of course. Being the long-range thinker that you are, you know that you're going to need something that's easy to scale so you can meet the demand of your growing user base. It needs to be accessible from anywhere, meaning it can't be tied just to your EC2 instance like it currently is with EBS. You might eventually want to use a content delivery network or CDN to serve up the videos, and you know that you're going to need to access files from an internet API for that. And most importantly, you need a storage solution that's inexpensive. Since this is just a side project for you at the moment, you really can't be throwing tons of money at it. So enter the Simple Storage Service, or S3. The three S's, if that's not clear. This is inexpensive object storage in AWS. Now, if object storage doesn't really mean anything to you, for this exercise, you can think of it kind of as a file. A photo, a video, a log file, a PDF, something like that. To be clear, Amazon does offer an elastic file system, or EFS, service, and this is not that, this isn't technically a file server, but I personally find it helpful to think about the kinds of things I would store in S3, and generally those are going to be files. For all practical purposes, this storage is unlimited. In truth, there probably is some limit, but because of the massive size of Amazon's infrastructure and the ability to scale onto it, you're never really going to hit any limits here. And S3 is organized into buckets. Think of these as your top-level containers where you can store things, maybe a bucket for videos, a bucket for profile pictures, and so on. Okay, let's go see this in action, and I think you'll get a better feel for what it's all about. Okay, back in the AWS console, we're here in S3. If you need a quick video that shows you how to set up an AWS account and get to the console, check out this video linked above. All right, we're going to create a bucket. Remember, that's the top-level container or bucket, literally, for storing things. For bucket name, we'll call this Tiny Flicks. For region, generally you want to choose whatever's closest to your users or closest to the servers that are going to be accessing this bucket. I'll go with US East 2 here. If you have another bucket already that has all the settings configured, you can copy those settings over, but we don't. This is our first one, so I'll scroll down. Next, we have options about access. This is super, super important. You can grant public access to your buckets in a variety of ways. You'll see those listed here, access control lists or ACLs, bucket policies, access point policies, or all. But granting public access is generally not a great idea, meaning you don't want your files accessible to the whole world. You generally just want to limit it to some internal services that are needed to run your application. There have actually been some pretty high-profile hacking incidents that have occurred because the S3 bucket was left open. So AWS now makes this the default, that we're going to block all public access. In fact, if you deselect this option, you're going to have to acknowledge that you really know what you're doing and that you've been warned. So we'll select this again to block all public access and scroll down. With bucket versioning, you can keep multiple versions of objects or files in the bucket. This makes it possible to recover old versions. Maybe your users need to revert to an old version of a video or a photo or they accidentally delete something and they need to get it back. But it also comes in handy if there's some kind of application failure and you need to restore previous versions. This option will obviously increase the amount of files that you're storing and your normal S3 rates are going to apply. So by default, this is turned off. But if you have a good reason to enable it, you just toggle it on here. 
Scrolling down to tags, these help you manage and organize things, and is also an easy way to track your costs. Let's say that this bucket is going to be used for development purposes only, so we'll say environment equals dev. For other buckets, maybe you have environment equals prod for production or testing and so on. And then when you're looking at your billing, it'll be easy to separate out what's what. Okay, I'll just remove that. You can automatically encrypt new objects stored in the bucket. We're gonna leave that though as the default of disabled. There's some advanced settings here as well for object lock. This will prevent objects from being deleted or overwritten. This is a handy feature to have if you have some kind of regulatory requirement to store things. But we're gonna leave it disabled for what we're doing and then create bucket. Okay, success. Let's click into Tiny Flicks. Obviously we haven't uploaded anything here. First though, I wanna create some folders. So create folder. We'll do one folder for videos. Keep everything else the same. And then we'll do another one for photos. Create folder. Now, as an aside, folders are actually a bit of a mirage here, meaning behind the scenes, they aren't actually folders like you would think of them in Windows Explorer or a structure like that. S3 is a flat file structure. What really happens is your folder name gets prefixed in front of the file name. But for the purposes of interacting with things here in the UI, they behave very much like folders and it's just easy to see and keep things organized this way. So just a side note there. All right, let's go upload something to the videos folder. I'll click on that and then click upload. I have a short video here on my hard drive, the introduction for my channel actually. I'll just drag that over to right over here and drop it. You'll see that gets picked up right down there. There's other things you can configure here around permissions and other properties. We're just gonna leave everything the default though and say upload. This will take a minute or two, depending on the size of your file. You can also upload using the AWS command line interface or programmatically using the software developer kit. While we're waiting for this, if you're enjoying the content, consider hitting that like button as well as subscribing to be notified of other AWS content when I upload it. And success. Down here on the bottom, you'll see the video file name, Tiny Technical Tutorials, it's an MP4. If you click into this, you'll get all the different details about it. There's additional tabs here as well for permissions and version. If you were using versioning, that would have some good information in there for you. The object URL is how you would actually access this through a browser. So I'll just click on this here. And denied. You remember that's because we blocked all public access. So if you actually need to view this video, you have a couple options. You can open right up here. I'll click on that. There's the video, I'll pause that. This is working because it generates a temporary signed URL that's good for five minutes and it's granting you access to this video. You can also, coming back here, choose to download it locally and you could view it there. All right, so those are the basics of creating a bucket, a folder, and then uploading objects to it. Before we wrap up though, I wanna show you how to delete the S3 bucket. So backing up here to S3, you'll see I just have the one bucket. So select that and then come up here to delete. Now in our case, the bucket is not empty. So you have to go empty the bucket first by clicking on this link, use the empty bucket configuration. And because this can't be undone, it's kind of forcing you to say, yes, I really do wanna do this. So you need to type in permanently delete empty. So that just got rid of everything in the bucket, but there's a helpful message up here to actually go delete the bucket itself. You can click on that. And yes, we do want to delete the bucket. Here we need to type in the name of the bucket, tiny flicks, delete, and now everything's gone. So that's it, the basics of S3 on AWS. You and your friends are well on your way with the tiny flicks side project. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.